In this video, I'm gonna build this awesome drill charging station with storage. Not only will it hold all my drills, chargers, and batteries, but it'll also hold my sandpaper, fasteners, and my most used tools. This was an easy one day build and I will have plans available in the link down in the description. So if you'd like to increase the storage in your shop, let's build it. Last year I built this miter saw station and I left this last section of wall bare because at the time I hadn't put a lot of thought into how I wanted to use it. All I knew is I didn't want to build more cabinets just to take up the space. Since then I've decided that what I really want is a sort of grab and go organizer that gathers all my most used items and puts them at my fingertips. And I also want to store and charge my growing collection of drills and drivers. I'd like to stick to the clean and simple look that I gave my miter saw station, but these items are so heavily used that they need to be visible and easy to get to and not behind doors. And because I won't be adding doors and drawers, I'm going to keep the material usage to a minimum. This whole thing will be made from one sheet of three quarter inch ply and about a half a sheet of half inch ply. After cutting said ply into large chunks, I head to the table saw to cut out the basic parts for the case. I'll get the vertical sides and dividers, as well as a top, bottom, and horizontal divider. I always make the first cut slightly too wide so that I can go back and cut the ragged factory edge off these parts for a crisp, clean look. And after that, I can cut everything to final length, as well as cut some shelves. Then I can move on to cutting the joinery. Primary joinery on this project will be pocket screws. And my pocket cutting machine is maybe a little bit different than what you're used to seeing. It uses routers instead of drill bits to cut the pockets, which makes for a much cleaner pocket and shallower angle of entry, which helps a lot with your pieces not moving on you when you join them together. If you have access to a Craig jig, that'll work for this as well. The next thing I want to do is add some shelf pinholes. I want the option to adjust these shelves up and down depending on what tools I decide to store in it over time. My new favorite way to make these is with the LR32 system from Festool. A router bit leaves a much cleaner hole than a drill and this system is so easy to use just click and move along this indexed rail for perfectly spaced holes. A Craig shelf pin jig is another budget option that I've used for years, but the holes it produces just aren't as clean. And with that out of the way, the last bit of cutting that I need to do is make rabbits into the back of the sides to house the back panel. This is an easy process at the table saw and it starts with using setup blocks to get the blade height and distance from the fence just right. Setup blocks are simple to use and come in sets with loads of different sizes. I make the first cut to establish the bottom of the rabbit which is the exact thickness of the back panel. Then I nudge the fence closer to the blade and make the next cut. You can do this operation with a router or with a dado stack in the table saw but I only need two rabbits so I'm not going to bother setting that up. I keep this process up until the fence just kisses the blade. I can remove that last little bit of material and now I have a nice clean rabbit along the back. For the front edge of this thing, I'm gonna apply some iron-on edge banding. I definitely think since this is a shop cabinet and it will take some abuse over time, adding hardwood edge banding here would be a good way to go. But I'm crunched for time and I just wanna get this project done so that I can start using it. The iron-on stuff is easy to apply and the adhesive hardens in just a couple of minutes as opposed to gluing on hardwood and waiting a couple hours for that to dry. I want to keep moving and finally it's time to assemble. First I build the basic box by attaching the top and bottom to the sides using pocket screws. No glue, just screws, but I'm going to use clamps here to keep everything nice and tight as I make these joints. Even though these castle pocket holes are way better when it comes to the joints not moving on you, this is a pretty large box and it's just nice to have a helping hand keep everything from falling over. Also notice I'm assembling it face down so that the rabbits that I cut in the back are sticking up and don't accidentally get covered. Next I'm going to drill a power access hole into the bottom of the case using the world's dullest Forstner bit. I also have a scrap of ply underneath to prevent blowout on the other side of the hole. Then it's time to add the back panel. I'm going with half inch ply for the back to make this thing nice and sturdy. It's going to be holding a lot of weight so I want the back to be as heavy duty as possible. It just slides right into the rabbits that I cut. I'm going to pre-drill and countersink the holes using this countersink drill bit because why not do two things at one time? Then I start popping in screws all around the back. With the basic carcass together I can turn it over and build out the inside. 
The bottom of this cabinet is going to be a drill charging station, so I add some shallow spacers and fasten the horizontal divider into place with pocket screws. I can then flip the cabinet up and screw those spacers into place because they're going to get used for the false wall that I add later. Then I need to add the three vertical dividers and these can really be placed wherever. I know I want to keep my sandpaper on the left side so I use my two different size sanding discs to find the location of the first divider. I then cut two spacers from a scrap of MDF to hold everything in place while I mark for my screw placements and drill my holes and add screws. To screw this together from the bottom side, I need to use a right angle attachment on my drill because this space is so small. These right angle drill attachments are so handy when you need to get into tight spaces. This one is specifically for the Festool drill, but all the major brands make them. I did the same process for the other two dividers, making sure everything was nice and square and then I held those in place with clamps while I added the screws. Now everything is assembled and it's time to get this thing on the wall. As luck would have it, two Festool sustainers and a couple of shims create the perfect platform to get this thing in place and level. Which is nice because now I'm free to drill my pilot holes without having to hold the cabinet up with one hand. Since this is a concrete block wall, I'm using tap cons to fasten it. If you're adding this to a normal framed wall, just locate the studs in the wall and attach using standard cabinet screws. If you want to know more details about attaching to block walls like this, I have a whole video explaining the process that you can watch after this video. And because this is a 50 inch wide cabinet, I'm going to use a total of six screws to safely attach it to the wall. And now these sustainers can go back to taking up space in the back of the shop. All right, now that I've got this big beast up on the wall, it's time to load it up and see what I can fit in here. All right, so the first thing I want to do is add a power source. Having this power strip tucked into the back is going to keep all the charger wires from hanging down below. And I have a lot of chargers. Over the last decade, I've ended up with multiple tool brands and different voltage batteries, and this is going to keep everything corralled together in one place very well. All right, guys, so this is a real-time build, and I did notice one small thing as I was loading this up, which is this bottom shelf has a little bit of give in the middle, and I think over time that might be problematic and cause a little bit of sag, especially if I hang drills off of the bottom of this station, which is what I'm planning on doing right now. So to fix that, I'm going to take a scrap of plywood and create a vertical divider. I'll install it right here and attach it with pocket screws. This is going to give it the added strength that it needs, as well as create a nice divider between where the chargers are and where I plan to keep the batteries. I also need to move this spacer to the other side of the new divider. Then I'm going to cut a strip of half inch ply and this is going to make a nice false wall to hide all the wires in the power strip. I left a one inch gap at the bottom for all the wires to fit underneath. This gives the charging station a super clean look and the batteries are easy to add to the chargers without the wires getting in the way. So in this corner is where I'm going to keep all of my batteries. Now, I definitely have a small pile of batteries now, but this can definitely grow as I add more tools and more brands. So I want to make sure that I give myself plenty of room to organize them by brand and by size. Then I can pop my shelves into place. To do this, I'm using these plastic shelf clips because they hold the shelf in place, which I thought was important since I don't want to accidentally drag the shelf out when I pick up a tool. Next, I can add all my sanding discs. This space is going to hold all my 5 and 6 inch sanding discs, which is super nice. And these other cubbies can hold my most used tools. This is where having the adjustable shelves is nice because I can make the most out of the space. And next I'm going to figure out how to add my drills. So my old drill charging station was great for me at the time that I built it. I had a relatively small number of drills and chargers. But today my collection has just grown too big and I can't keep everything in that one small cabinet. Another issue I have with it is it requires the drills to stand up on their own, meaning you have to have the batteries installed. And even today, I don't have that many batteries that I can keep one in every drill all the time. I've got some on the chargers and some with other tools. Even still, take this 12 volt design with the smaller battery. I mean, I can get it to stand up on its own, but really it's very top heavy and it needs to be hung up. To get started, I need to fasten strips of plywood into these little T-shapes. A couple screws will hold them together. I'm careful to pre-drill the plywood, otherwise the screws might split the ply in half. You can make as many or as few of these as you need. I need a bunch and these are all upside down. Hold on, I'll turn these around and show you how they're supposed to go. Well, never mind. You get the idea. I'm going to attach all these T's to a single strip of plywood so that everything is one solid unit, which is going to make it way easier to install. Using super glue here makes a nice temporary bond. Just enough to hold them in place while I test the fit with a drill so I know how much gap to place between each one. 
I just repeat the same process over and over with each drill that I want to store until I get to the end. I'm trying not to make the fit too tight so that I can put different drills in different spots and don't have to remember the exact order they go in. Then I can turn the whole thing over and countersink some pilot holes down each side. And I can secure everything with screws. Next I'm going to add some pilot holes to the top for installation. And then I can cut off the little remainder of the strip to make it flush with the side. Installing it now is super easy, I just eyeball where I want it to be and screw it into place. The only thing left to do now is load it up. Yeah, I know, I've got a drill hoarding problem, but at least they all look pretty now. So I still have space to add more stuff, but it took me a minute or three to realize what I should add. Ah, got it. Fasteners. So I hopped onto the old Amazon and found these organizer bins. I like these bins a lot. They're twice the size of my old red bins, and they're clear so I can see how much is in there. And as you can see, I've already changed my mind about the layout, and now these fastener bins are going to go on the right side for some visual balance. I did have to relocate the vertical divider so that these would fit snugly, but it's well worth it for 27 new organized bins. Labels are included with these, but since my bins are so high up on the wall, I decided to add my own labels to the front. I'd say that just about does it. Drill charging, sandpaper, fasteners, and tools. Well, all right, guys, that's it. This thing is done, and I could not be happier with having all these tools and supplies right at my fingertips. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and that it's inspired you to get more organized in your own shop. And also remember that I do have build plans for this, and I'll leave that link down in the description below. If you enjoy this kind of content, please subscribe to my channel and also leave me a comment to let me know what you thought. And also check out these other shop project videos that I have. I think you guys are really going to enjoy those. And until next time, have fun in the shop.